and she held it for about four minutes. And all of a sudden, she screams out in pain. Well, the ladies that were up there with her had no idea of, had no way of knowing that she was doing this to herself because it was completely dark in the room. Uh, so they did what they could to keep her calm and comfort her. Uh, I saw this and my heart sank. And uh, Todd and I went and, and met with the family and, and showed them this video. And still, after we showed her the video, she denied faking it. Uh, she, her exact response was, well, I know it looks like I was pinching myself there, but I don't remember doing that. And the family looked at her and, and believed every word she was saying. And, and at that point, it, it, it's hard to even do your job because it's so obvious that somebody is faking the things that are happening. And, and once you catch them faking one thing, you really can't take anything else they say seriously. You know, as much as you want to, we're human, and, and, and we just can't. Oh, yeah. And that, that I I know that uh, talking to some other groups that they have run across that where, you know, the the people, you know, wanted, you know, proof that their house was haunted just where they could tell their friends. Well, I had a, this ghost hunting, you know, group over my house and they discovered my house is haunted and when it really wasn't. So did you have any other cases like that at all, just out of curiosity or similar to it or worse than that? Uh, as far as faking, no, but uh, as far as people wanting to tell their friends they had a ghost, uh, we showed up one night, and we got there at the same time as the pizza guy. Um, they had invited a bunch of friends over to watch us do what we do, and uh, I ruined their party because I, I walked into the home and I said, the only person that is staying is the person that lives here, otherwise we're not doing our jobs tonight. Uh, we're not your entertainment for the evening. Um, and they were disappointed because they wanted to show their friends that they had this, this ghost something demon come in and talk to the ghosts for them. And uh, very quickly, we realized that uh, it was more of a game for them. And, and that's disappointing. You know, I, I don't want to come off as somebody that you know, has no sense of humor because if you see me in, in, in my normal everyday life, that's, that's all I am. As I, I'm sarcastic and I, I like to make people laugh, but <clears throat> when it comes to the paranormal, I owe it to the field to be serious, and I owe it to the field to conduct myself uh, with integrity. And, and I've always said that I, I want to be a, somebody that you know, the paranormal field can look to and, and be proud, and, and, and I can be an advocate for the field. But um, in that moment, you know, you got to put your foot down. And it was disheartening because and you know, that family didn't really need us there. And we could have been helping another family that night that, that really did need us. Is there that many families out there that are being visited by, you know, maybe ex-loved ones, or I should say past loved ones that have passed on, or prior owners of the house maybe that were murdered or died in the house? I mean, is it that many? Or uh, Typically, we get into the end of August, and it's almost every weekend through March or April. So it, it really, uh, there's more than you think. Um, you know, and some of those are multiple visits to the same home, but I, I would say for about six, seven, eight months, we're pretty busy. And it's pretty, pretty consistent all the way through fall, winter, and into spring. But uh, it seems to die down when it comes to April through July, and I attribute that a lot to people are, uh, you know, on vacations and not really paying attention to what's happening in the home. They're not at home as much, but that gives us a little bit of a, a reprieve too, and we get to spend time with our friends and family. But, um, yeah, it's, it's there's more than I think than the uh, the regular person that has nothing to do with the paranormal field would would expect. Wow. <laughs> Now, have you ever got anything on tape at all, or I should say digitally, get any, uh, you know, spirits or entities or anything like that, where, you know, you saw things move or anything like, like that on a on a video? Honestly, no. Um, I mentioned earlier, a lot of what we've used the video for is just disproving things that we thought had happened. Uh, there have been times where we've looked at the video and there's been distortion. 
uh, but nothing that we could say is definitely paranormal. Nothing that I'm willing to put my reputation on the line for. Um, you know, like I said, it, 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 at some point it's, it's probably going to happen. At some point, you know, putting those video cameras up, every investigation is going to, is going to pay dividends and, and we're going to get, um, that piece of video that we could show the client and say, you know what, this is what's in your home. But, um, thus far it hasn't happened and, you know, someday maybe. Huh. So, um, what are your plans now with the group in the future? I, I'm sure you guys have plans how you're going to go to the next level or, or are you just going to keep, you know, going on the way you're going on? I think we're just going to keep it status quo. It's, we're not a group that really seeks any sort of spotlight. Um, doing residential investigations is what we've chosen to do. And, you know, whenever we're needed and whenever we're called upon, that's when we'll do what we got to do. But uh, uh, like I said earlier, uh, I would never wish activity on a family. So if we have four or five or six months where, where we don't do an investigation, uh, that's okay with me because uh, I don't want a family to suffer just just because I want to do an investigation. Um, in the meantime, you know, I, I do a lot of the charity work with uh, the foundation that I started autographs for coaches and we run events and try to raise money for animal shelters. So uh, when well, we have some downtime, that's what I concentrate on. And, well, why and, don't uh, you? I keep myself busy. Why don't you talk a little bit about it and give it a plug? I mean, you know, uh, we do have a large uh, listenership and, you know, why don't you go ahead? Well, this, this I, I appreciate you letting me talk about it. This comes from a, a very personal place and, uh, I kind of got to tell the whole story, which takes a few minutes. Um, before I started the paranormal team in 2006, I, I bought the home that I live in right now. And uh, I was going through a breakup. I had bought the home for myself and and uh, my girlfriend or my fiance at the time, her, uh, her boy. Uh, it was one of those things where there was a breakup, they didn't end up moving here, and I thought it was the end of my world. I slipped into a horrible depression. I decided that uh, when I got my house, I wanted to get a dog. I had always wanted a dog, and I could never have one in the apartments that I lived in. Uh, so that was my number one goal. And uh, even though I was, you know, in a bad place, I, I thought, hey, I, I wanted to get a dog. And I wanted to get uh, a yellow lab because my uncle had one. So I looked online for shelters. And I found a, a pit lab mix um, that had been rescued from a home. And uh, his story was that the, the neighbor had called and they had gone into the home and rescued him because he had been so abused. Six months old, I called, inquired, and they didn't even want me to come down and waste my time because he didn't like men. I convinced them to, have, to let me have a chance. And, and I went down there and I remember them letting him out of the the camel and, and like pointing him in the right direction and I was on one knee calling for him and this little dog who wasn't supposed to fight anybody came running to me and jumped into my arms and from that day forward we were we were buddies um, fast forward about a month or two I don't remember the exact date and it's probably good because it's probably going insane uh, but my depression had got the best of me and I sat in the bathroom, and I went through my friends and family one by one, kind of uh, you know, going over why it would be okay if I wasn't here. And I had gotten to the point where I was convinced it was it was over and I was going to end my life. And I felt something on my arm, and I looked down, and it was my dog, Murray. He had put his chin on my arm, and he was looking up at me with these big, brown, beautiful eyes. And at that moment, he snapped me out of it. Uh, I truly believe that night he saved my life. From that moment on, he wasn't just a dog. He was like my son. And, you know, he's 12 and a half now and uh, considerably slower than he was before. Um, around the time he was seven, though, I started to get more um, opportunities within the paranormal field to uh, go and speak at events. 
and they always give you a table, and I had nothing to put at the table. And I thought, you know, I could probably put this to good use and do something good with this opportunity. So in 2013, I created Pottergrass for Coaches, and uh, it really was to make a legacy for Murray. I wanted people to know how special he was and what he did for me. And uh, we would just sell photos of Murray and I. He would photograph them. We had a stamp made of his paw, and then I would personalize them at events for ten dollars. And we really had no expectations. We didn't know how people would react to it. And as a part of that, I opened up and told my story about depression and my attempted suicide. And I talk a lot about suicide prevention when I have the chance to speak at these events. And through telling my story, it opened up others to share their story and and realize that they're not alone. And it was a beautiful thing that I'd... Maybe I was naive, but I really didn't expect that to happen. Uh, fast forward about a year, we had been making a few dollars here and there at events, and it really had taken off. And my good friend John Cassidy had mentioned to me that perhaps I should do uh, a Pottergrass or Putin's exclusive event where the speakers would donate their time, and you know all of the ticket sales would go to a shelter in the area that we were in. Uh, it was incredibly successful. I think we raised seven hundred forty-one dollars that first event. Uh, it took off, and I owe a lot of that to John Cassidy. I owe a lot of that to Scott Tepperman, a very good friend of mine, Tim Woolworth. There are so many folks in this field that have rallied behind Pottergrass for Pooches and have donated their time and just gotten behind the cause. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and here we are, five years later, and. This past weekend, we went over $18,500 in total donations. And I uh, have an event this Saturday in Houghton Lake, Michigan, where we hope to go over 20000 total. And it's like five years ago, we started this with no expectations, and now it's, you know, there's a chance of us going over $20,000. It's incredible. And, and the best part is that Murray's legacy is set. And uh, people know him, and... And he's had the opportunity to help raise money for animals all over this country. And uh, if I allow myself to think about it too much, I'll probably start crying. But uh, it's, uh, it's a beautiful, wonderful thing. And I'm so blessed uh, to be able to use uh, the paranormal as a platform uh, to get this done. I mean, it, it's the platform I've been given. It's, it's what I have and uh, the folks that support me. And I absolutely love those people and uh, love what we're able to do. Oh, wow. That, that, that was heavy. You know, you know, I have a dog. It's part terrier, part uh, poodle. And, you know, the dog is 20 years old, which, you know, the vet told me about a year ago, to, you know, I need to put him down. I mean, he's been blind for two years. And for the last six months, I have to keep a diaper on him. Uh, you know, because he has accidents and stuff like that. But I couldn't ever think of putting my dog down, you know, unless it was in pain, and he appears not to be in any pain. But, you know, people don't realize, you know, you come attached to an animal just as much as you can as a human. And, you know, when we bought this house uh, that I'm living in now in the harbor 20 years ago, my kids hung up, you know, Christmas lights around the decking the rail and uh, evidently it rained that night uh, one of the connections wasn't uh, connected properly to the next string of lights in the morning all of a sudden this dog comes running to our door you know and barking at it barking really loud you know like and then it kept running off and then coming back and running off and we couldn't figure out what was wrong well we finally followed the dog and he took us to, you know, the sliding window, you know, in the dining room, uh, you know, and the sliding door, I should say. Our, our decking was on fire. Now, you know, here's a dog. You, you don't even, you think, it. he's just a dumb dog. I realized this dog realized there was something happening and was trying to get our attention. And I mean, I, I, I bonded at that moment to that dog. As strong as I ever did to one, I hate to say it, to any one of my eight kids. I mean, you know, he is just part of the family. He's part of my life. 